Welcome to Electron Online, and in this video we're going to talk about the momentum of electromagnetic radiation. And here we're probably talking about something very strange, because remember the equation for momentum, momentum is equal to the mass times the velocity of an object. So for example, a car <coughs> that has a certain mass of 1,000 kilograms moving at 20 meters per second, we multiply the two, we get momentum. But electromagnetic radiation does not have any mass, so how can that have momentum? Well, there's another way of looking at momentum. We can also say that the change in momentum, or impulse, and I'll write impulse underneath it because we don't want to confuse the I with the I for intensity. So the impulse is known as the change in momentum, which is equal to the force applied by the amount of time that it takes that that force is being applied. So when a certain force is applied at an object, that object will then impart momentum onto the object, and therefore we can see that sunlight can, uh, can apply pressure to an object, and pressure, of course, means force per unit area, which means if electromagnetic radiation can push against an object, it can impart momentum onto the object. And that's why we're going to try and come up with an equation that actually allows us to calculate the momentum of electromagnetic radiation. Well, the units for impulse, that would be the same units as force times time, so the units for that would be equal to newtons times seconds. So we need an expression that has units newton times seconds, which will then be force times time, which is the same as impulse or the change in momentum. So remember the units for intensity. Intensity was equal to a power divided by area. And so the units for power divided by area was, uh, let's see, watts per square meter. And a watt was a joule per second, uh, so that would be a joule divided by meter squared times seconds. And a joule is a newton meter, so we have a newton times meter divided by meter squared times seconds. All right, so that's nowhere close to having newtons times seconds. We do have newtons, we have seconds in the wrong place. But then we realize that pressure was equal to I divided by C. So I divided by C is equal to pressure. And I'll write it out so we don't confuse the P for pressure with the P for momentum, even though we tend, and the P for power. So pressure is, is equal to I divided by C. And so the units of that would be Newton meters, meter divided by meter squared times second. And of course, divide by C, that's meters per second, but it's in the denominator. So that would be uh, times meters divided by seconds, like that, because we divide by C, which is in meters per second. And then notice that seconds cancel out and meters cancel out. So this cancels out and this cancels out. And notice now we have newtons per meter squared, which of course are the units for pressure. If we now divide it by C again, so if we now say, well, what is I divided by C squared? Well, that would be equal to, or I shouldn't say equal to, but the units of that is equal to newtons divided by meters squared. And then again, we multiply that one over meters per second. Notice that will be the same units as saying newtons times seconds divided by meters cubed. Now we're close to what we're looking for. Notice we were looking for something that gave me newton times seconds, and indeed I have newton times seconds in the numerator, but I have meters cubed in the denominator. So in other words, I divided by C squared has to be equal to the change in momentum divided by volume. Hmm. So this means that I over C squared is equal to, uh, that would be the change in momentum divided by volume. So if I solve that equation for change in momentum, what I can then say is that the change in momentum is equal to 1 I over C squared times volume. Or, sometimes what we can write is, we can write that I over C squared is equal to 1 over volume times the change in momentum. And that's probably the best way to write the equation. Now, what does it all mean? Well, it turns out, oop, and I'm missing something here, uh, missing a, a line for the I there. So what that means is I have an expression. I can take the intensity, 
which is basically the magnitude of the pointing vector divided by c squared that is equal to the change in momentum provided to us by a certain volume of electromagnetic radiation. So, if I take a certain amount of volume, let's say I have a beam of light, let's say the beam of light has a cross-sectional area of one square meter, and let's say that I make the beam long enough so that the length of the beam is equal to the time that it takes for light or electromagnetic radiation to travel one second. So in one second, a beam of light travels 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So this would be 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per, uh, meters per second. That would be the length would be meters. So that would be the length of the beam. The cross-section area would be A, which means that the volume of the beam, the volume would be equal to the area times the length, which is equal to 1 meter squared times 3 times 10 to the 8 meters. And so it would be 3 times 10 to the 8 meters cubed. So what we're saying here is that if we take the volume of electromagnetic radiation equal to a, the volume of a beam that is, is 300,000 kilometers long and 1 square meter in, in cross-sectional area, and we divide that into the momentum, change of momentum, that is equal to I over C squared. Or, what we can say is that the momentum contained in this is equal to I divided by C squared times the volume. So that's the way I wrote it over here. So let me box this in, in red here. So here you can say that the amount of momentum contained within this beam of light, I take the volume and I multiply times the intensity and divide by C squared, that gives me the momentum of that light beam. So let's calculate what it would be in that particular case, and I don't have a lot of room here, so let me come over here and use a different color. So what we're going to do here is calculate the momentum in this beam of light that is 300,000 kilometers long, 3 times 10 to 8 meters, has a cross-sectional area of 1 square meter, and we want to know how much momentum is contained within that light beam. So, the amount of momentum, delta P, is equal to I divided by C squared times the volume. So in this case, that would be 1,361 watts per square meter. That is the intensity of sunlight when it reaches the Earth, divided by 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And we square that, so that's divided by C squared, times the volume of that beam, and the volume would be 3 times 10 to the 8 meters cubed for the volume. And notice, then, then we get the same numerical value as I divided by C, because the number for volume and the number for C is going to be the same in that case. And with a calculator, we now get 1361 divided by 3e to the 8, and we get 7.35. So this is equal to 7.35 times 10 to the minus 6. And what are the units? Momentum is kilograms times meters per second. So that would be kilograms times meters per second. And that would be the momentum contained within a beam of light that is one second long, so to speak, or 3 times 10 to 8 meters per second long, and one square meter in cross-section. And that's how we look at momentum of light. Light has indeed momentum, so when photons hit an object, there will actually be a recoil, and that object can be moved back by light shining on it or any electromagnetic radiation. Remember, it provides pressure, and it can provide momentum as well, and this is how we calculate it.